It would be foolish to walk up to Black without a disguise, though. He knows me for deluxe and won't want me around. So I take one of the hollows out with an elbow shot to the neck. Out from the shadows runs Gap Tooth to help. Let's drag this one back behind a parked car where I can remove this hoodie and try it on. And voila, here I am, one, two. Gap Tooth cracks up, watching me practice the way they walk, disoriented-like and wobbly, staring into space. I pull the hood over my head, of course, so he cannot see my eyes. They give us away. You wait here, kid. And if this one awakens, well, knock her out again. He understands and is happy to have an important job to do. If I'm not back in an hour, I want you to go get the lady who runs the boarding house for me. Ask for Inaya. Can you do that? He nods. Good boy. Now just sit down, cross-legged, and let's put her head in your lap so it looks like she's taking a nap. If anybody walks by, talk to her like she's your mom or something. Play with her hair. Don't worry about them. They won't catch on. I wobble away and grab hold of the fence, sturdy and firm, planted in this undulating world. Everything has changed. I have to steady my eyes on the iron against all this round and around, navigating less than sentient life in search of my sister, like traveling through virgin snow over familiar territory, now mad and crackling, slippery like black ice underfoot, unknown again, diving to sudden flashes of hollows listing one way, leaning the other, floating and bobbing like lobster trap markers hanging off the Atlantic shelf. 